still completely unsure about whether we'll ever be able to set foot on land. I'm feeling a little bit desperate at this point. Wow, that's amazing. That's an anchorage. How do you feel about arriving? Um, overall a bit deflated, I think. We had absolutely no idea about the pandemic while we were crossing. Welcome back. If you've been following our channel, you'll know that we have started our Atlantic crossing from the Canary Islands to the Caribbean on 29th of February 2020. Back then, the coronavirus wasn't a pandemic and no European country had gone into lockdown. We spent 25 days at sea with no access to the internet. Our only means of communication is a Garmin inReach, which allows us to send and receive 160 character satellite text messages. As we approach the Caribbean, we find out the virus has now affected the whole world. Catch of the day, sargassum seaweed. At least I can see it up close. Oh, it smells. We only have one and a half days left on this passage, which is really exciting. So originally we had uh, hoped to land in Guadeloupe, uh, not just because we think we'd love it there, but also because it's a European island where we can use our SIM cards to work right away. But yeah, that's closed. Um, yeah, most islands are closed. Then we plan to go to Grenada, but guess what? It's closed down as well. So now our last hope is the Grenadines, St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Um, we are going to try and land in Bekia, or however that's pronounced, and hope they allow us on shore and uh, don't close the border just before we arrive. Um, so yeah, still completely sort of unsure about whether we'll ever be able to set foot on land, which is what we really, really, really want right now. But yeah, we'll see how it goes. We might have to do a 14 day quarantine period on the boat. And yeah, as you can probably see by my rolling eyes, we're ready to get off this boat by now. Like it's been fun, but not that much fun that I want to stay on board for another 14 days without going anywhere, doing anything. So yeah, that's the news. Have a good feeling about this one? Big mahi. Big mahi? Nice. I'm just going to put away the seats. Leave there. There's the bucket. Get the bucket, get the bucket. You reckon just try and hook it straight on board? I or? think so, yeah. What do you think? Yeah, maybe. Just watch out for the hook, okay? Yeah. Wow, I can see him finally! Whoa! He's kicking! Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure whether you can see it behind me or not, but um, we can see Barbados now. The glow of it we could see yesterday evening when the sun set, but now we can actually see the island. It should be just on the horizon. Nice to see land. Still got another day to go, but um, yeah, it feels like a big step. And yeah, it's probably, hopefully, about exactly 24 hours until we arrive into Bekia. So, yeah, there's a nice sunrise going on behind as well. And Eleanor's down below sleeping. So I'm out here just keeping watch. We have to keep a bit of a tighter watch now that we're nearer to land because of like fishing boats and stuff. 
<coughs> so I'm just gonna stay out I think rather than go below and try and get catnaps. On my night watch, a flying fish lands next to me in the cockpit. It takes me a while to muster up the courage to flick it overboard. I can see the lights of Barbados. So officially spotted land in a way. It feels unreal. <laughs> and um, unfortunately they're so far away I can't really uh, show, they don't really show on camera. But they're there. And uh, yeah, I'm really excited to see it in the daylight. It will feel a little bit more real. It's day 24, and this is our last full day on the ocean. When we left Lanzarote, we didn't expect that one island after the other would close its borders as we approached the Caribbean. We thought we'd endure a challenging ocean crossing together and have a big celebration upon our arrival. Now, even as we see land and start feeling proud of our little achievement, we worried and nervous. Will we be allowed to land anywhere? Our last night on the ocean is the longest night sail we've ever had. Just as we were grasping the idea that we've pretty much arrived and in the morning we'll put down the anchor and hopefully not move for the next two weeks, we got the news that I might be denied entry into St Vincent and the Grenadines based on the fact that I'm Italian. Yeah, it just, it never ends, it literally never ends. This. Thing. Um, yeah, I don't know what will happen tomorrow. I haven't had a good night. I'm stressed out. Um, if we can't check into the Grenadines, the only islands left to check into are right in the middle of the hurricane belt. I'm feeling a little bit desperate at this point. Um, it just feels like we made so many sacrifices to do this. Atlantic crossing this year rather than next year and it's kind of biting us in the butt. First time we see a Caribbean island, it's pretty cool. Um, this is Bakia and it's really wooded. Behind me is St Vincent and it's very built up and yeah it's a really cool feeling it's a perfect uh, tropical island I think. yeah yeah it's the perfect exactly what they look like. yeah exactly what you want to see when you arrive <laughs> as we round the north corner of Bekwe, we finally get some phone coverage we buy some data and read the news we cannot believe our eyes when we read that the coronavirus has become a pandemic and claimed over 20,000 lives worldwide the UK has locked down just two days ago, while Italy went into lockdown two weeks ago, and we had no idea. We had asked our families not to tell us any bad news before we left. A death or someone getting ill would have upset us and distracted us from keeping the boat and ourselves safe. There was no way we could turn around once we were in the trade winds, but no one could predict a worldwide pandemic. How do you feel about arriving? Um, overall a bit deflated I think. The, we kind of had this picture in our mind before we found out about all the coronavirus kicking off that we'd be like we'd turn up and then go snorkeling, we'd go to this island and that island and we'd sail around and have a great time. Yeah. We'd be sipping young coconuts on the beach <laughs> and it seems like we're just going to be sat on our boat for another at least two weeks. I know like we shouldn't whinge like everyone's in the same boat but um, well, we might be refused entry like they said last night, huh? Yeah, so. we might be refused entry and we might be refused entry into every island. Yeah. So, <clears throat> yeah, it's a bit of a conundrum and not exactly what we were expecting. So, yeah, honestly a bit disappointed but at the same time it is really cool and there's frigate birds and boobies flying around. 
and yeah, kind of excited to get in and see it even if we can't make the most of it yet. Oh, is this guy for the first time? Yeah, first time ever. Ryan goes on deck and hoists the Q flag to signal that we haven't checked into the country yet. We land in the Caribbean after sailing 3,000 nautical miles from Lanzarote to Beque. It took us 25 days at an average speed of 5 knots. Wow, that's amazing. That's an anchorage. Oh, it looks incredible. It's 8 a.m. and we want to know if we're allowed into the country. So we drop the anchor and Ryan goes into town to try to check us in. I don't dare get off the boat. So Ryan went to try and check in this morning and uh, it was kind of a no, but not a definite no. The uh, immigration official was really against us checking in, especially me, because I'm from Italy makes no sense but luckily one of the customs officials was really understanding and he wanted to help us so um, basically he told Ryan just email me every proof you've got that um, you have not been in a coronavirus affected country for a long time and I'll see what I can do I'll show it to the health official he just replied to our email and he said uh, that the captain could, could go in and check in it's not clear whether I'm allowed in to the country or whether um, we need to do a quarantine basically I've got no news on like yeah I don't know <laughs> but at least we are safe in a fairly hurricane free zone um, so yeah results yes Yay. we checked in Woohoo! thank you Vicky <laughs> and um, we don't even have to do a quarantine which everyone is subject to we have been at sea because we have been at days. sea for 25 days, yes! <laughs> but I can't wait to go to land and uh, apparently we just realized local time is like half 2 p.m. So Do you think we should gonna... go over to the beach for an ice cream? Yeah, then we're gonna put the flag up and then I want to walk the whole of the shoreline. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, that's where it's Oh! How are you feeling? Pretty relieved, <laughs> not to say. This is probably going to be us for the coronavirus now. Yeah. Which isn't too shabby. Just maybe we'll anchor further in, huh? Yeah. We're yeah. the last boat in the whole bay. Yeah, we're pretty much in the sea. Yeah. Oh, God. Thank God. Mm. <laughs> Can you give it to me? Yeah. Thank you. It's right in the sea? Joking. Mm -hmm. I guess it's this way up, right? Oh, yeah, I guess. It's a cool flag. Yeah, it's pretty cool, huh? Yeah, the Bakia one has like a little whale on it. I wanted to get it, but they charge us oh. 65 for this one, so I was like, oh, I'm not paying it anymore. Oh, wow. Oh, sorry, it's this way. So the, the flag cost as much as our get checking in, in fees. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone know the St. Vincent and the Grenadines the National, National, National Anthem? anthem. <laughs> they got the Queen on that thing, maybe she should sing the British one. Yeah. So we're going to shore. And I cannot wait. Just really want to go for a walk. See you later, Skua. As we get closer to shore, the beautiful, colourful buildings and palm trees come into view. The smell of the vegetation and street food joints hits us. It's a sensory overload after 25 days at sea. Stepping on shore after sailing across an ocean and all the stress of the arrival is absolute bliss. This is what I was hoping for and more, you know? It's incredible. And they're playing reggae, yay! <laughs> oh, here it is, Kanji Pani. <laughs> I just don't know which ear. 
I really love it here, really, really love it. I'm so glad we are here and uh, can't think of a better place to be stuck in, to be honest. I think Granada wouldn't have been this nice, to be honest, but we'll see. So cool, super excited. Uh, it's such a weird sensation to walk after so many days at sea, it's kind of painful. <laughs> um, yeah, my knees and legs hurt and my spine a bit as well. Uh, I can't wait to do more walking and film normal. We decided for a run punch. Yeah, no, we really have <laughs> Oh, is it really strong? Ouch! <laughs> so we didn't talk about it the other day when we arrived because the arrival was quite stressful and then the joy of being allowed in without quarantine was amazing but when we left the canary islands on the 28th of february the coronavirus spread was slowing down we thought it was on the way out and basically that it would be all over by the time we would get to the caribbean and as the borders started closing we thought that because the caribbean islands are so small they just wanted to be sure that there would be no coronavirus um, imported from tourism but it turns out that it actually went nuts while we were across the Atlantic and um, actually my hometown was the worst hit in the world, it's Bergamo in Italy um, so we had absolutely no idea about the pandemic while we were crossing we didn't think it was a big deal and um, we were really grateful that our families and friends didn't tell us how bad it really was because. Um, it would have been even more worrying, I have to say. Well, we could just focus on arriving safely and trying to check in to somewhere. But yeah, it's been a little bit of a shock once we started reading the news the other day as, as we arrived. We were like, oh my God, is there that many cases? Uh, it's been a little bit surreal to, uh, catch up to, to catch up with the news. In SVG, where we are, there's a couple of cases, but the country is still completely open and there's absolutely no restrictions. So people are still walking on shore, going to the supermarket, going to the bar, um, eating and drinking out and everything. Our first days in the Caribbean are a mix of strong emotions. The stress of checking in, the sadness and shock upon reading the news and the elation of stepping onto land. Overall, we lagged out by landing in one of the few countries in the world not in lockdown and with very few coronavirus cases, so the sense of relief is immense. It takes us a few days to come to terms with everything that's happened since we set off to cross the Atlantic, but we're so grateful to be here. They, like, I don't see the small ones escaping. Oh, what do you think? Ha ha ha.